along with the many other unexplainable feats, undoubtedly left by a highly advanced, highly capable lost civilization. There are the countless examples of extreme precision stone cutting. Not only is this remarkable past capability visible in their many stone walls and fortresses alike, but also in their exquisite artwork. If we look upon the statues of ancient Egypt, for example, the symmetry, along with the proportional precision present within their statues, is not only perfection personified, but unquestionably far too advanced for the so-called academically claimed builders to have achieved. According to the academics, along with their subsequent supposed accurate writings, these extraordinary feats of artistic perfection were somehow created by a group of individuals who were merely equipped with copper tools. Not only is this claim clearly ignorant of reality, but to create such works of symmetrical accuracy was unquestionably the work of a group of individuals far more advanced than even that of the Victorians, let alone those who thrived along the banks of the Nile more than 3,000 years ago. Not only is this precision present along the Giza Plateau, but it is also found at ancient sites all around the world. Masterfully created statues and structures often carved straight out of stone bedrock, with such vision and artistic prowess that many now presume that the individuals capable of such feats must have had advanced machinery at their disposal. Most of ancient India, for example, is created with such delicacy and exactness that we today could only accomplish the same with the utilization of modern machines. Furthermore, many scholars and independent researchers, even a number of highly recognized academic Egyptologists, have reluctantly concluded that many of the basalt, gypsum, and other vases shaped from extremely hard stones and indeed a number of multi-ton sarcophagus lids, were indeed turned into the shapes we see them as today, on some kind of ancient, enormous lathe. This conclusion is made regardless of the fact that to create such enormous stoneworks on a lathe would have undoubtedly been out of the realms of capabilities for those who are currently claimed as their creators. Not only do the ornamental artifacts of Egypt and much further afield strongly indicate machined working. But there is also overwhelming evidence of these same machines, reminiscent of modern stone cutting equipment present all over the world. Yet, conveniently, it is quietly ignored by the same individuals who have supposedly unraveled the history of these sites. Puma Panku, Giza's basalt floor, other areas throughout Giza, Peru, Malta, the list goes on. All these sites not only indicate an advanced, highly capable constructor, but also possess countless marks that, as of yet, we can only explain logically as having been left by precision, quick-rotation, stone-cutting machinery. They are yet another overwhelming collection of evidence, which not only flies in the face of current academic explanation, but proof of an advanced, now lost civilization having once been responsible for these sites' construction. They are highly compelling. Our mission over the next few videos is to demonstrate why certain individuals that are currently attempting to claim ancient ruins we so often share on our channel where the work of academia's claimed constructors are not only vastly incorrect, but that they are also being selectively ignorant we intend to demonstrate the reasons why this explanation as to their origins is a virtual impossibility, and also prove the level of advanced knowledge needed to construct them evades even our modern civilization. Roman and Greek civilizations undoubtedly contributed tremendous amounts to modern life, be it their technologies or building techniques. Architectural designs and ideas incorporated into structures that have survived millennia. However, there are many anomalous aspects of their academically claimed ruins that not only demonstrate unbelievable skill and precision, but are so advanced as to evade our own current understanding. One of these defining characteristics is undoubtedly polygonal masonry. 
randomly shaped or possibly cast stones, with some for example found within Sacsayhuaman, reaching far into hundreds of tons, masterfully fitted together, constructed into walls and fortresses, with no utilization of mortars. These often enormous megalithic blocks somehow placed together so perfectly that not only have they survived countless millennia, but are also earthquake-proof. These stone walls are a demonstration of what can be achieved if one had an astonishing intellect and indeed stone-building capabilities. These walls simply evade modern human explanation. No modern or indeed any of the well-studied ancient civilizations have ever demonstrated anything even near to the levels of refinement exhibited within these ancient walls, found all over the globe, yet ignored by academics the world over. How can certain individuals claim that academia's tale of events be accurate, yet seemingly overlook such astonishing feats of ancient engineering? How can one be expected to believe that the cultures currently claimed as having been responsible for such constructions, did indeed complete such tasks, when they are, in reality, too advanced an undertaking even for our own modern civilization. As such, continuing to evade explanation. We feel that many of these individuals are merely towing a line rather than attempting to unravel that which they perceive as enigmatic and considerably controversial to their current supposed viewpoint. We feel there is no excuse for a diligent researcher to overlook these achievements when investigating such sites, or indeed attempting to unravel the secrets of our past. We also feel that if one attempts to explain away such sites, or merely overlook such features in favor of academic explanation, it is an indication of conspiratorial motives rather than that of an honest purveyor of discoveries. There are many unexplained features of the ancient world, many of which we intend to share over the coming videos, and if one merely wishes to convey an illusion of all-knowing, they are soon to become unstuck, just like the academia they so mindlessly follow and we so vehemently disagree with. Due to these deliberate twisting of the facts, they are undoubtedly highly compelling. Many ancient sites found scattered all over the planet share an enigmatic feature. A pattern of scarring left upon their megalithic blocks and often upon their walls, once left by a technology built by an as yet not understood civilization. We've previously covered the perplexing technique often used by ancient wall builds, found all around the world in the form of mysterious metal clamps. Used to seat huge stone blocks as they settled over the following years, these clamps dated to similar times within antiquity and varying in style from continent to continent somehow turned up all over the world at around the same time, strongly suggesting some form of intercontinental travel and thus sharing of technologies. Furthermore, and perhaps more intriguing, are the links that we, here on the channel, along with others in alternative research, and even funded institutes from nations around the world, have begun to notice and hopefully triangulate a signature left by this once highly advanced group of individuals. The most noticeable of these sites, and the one which initially started us upon this journey, was Long Yu Cave in China. A cave system hewn from solid bedrock, leaving no waste piles of stone anywhere marking the stone with a telltale scar pattern. These parallel marks are not just found at Longyu. Similar yet not identical marks have also been found elsewhere on Earth. A slight variation in style is what one would expect with shared knowledge. As with the metal clamps, a slight variation can be found from continent to continent. These similar marks can also be found at the ancient quarry of Yangshan, China, and Petra in Jordan, and both argued for years to actually be the workmanship of a civilization far older than any noted within modern academia. These marks were then discovered to be upon the ceiling of Cave 1 at the ancient site of Mamalapuram within India, another site which in places shows levels of erosion far in excess of that which should be seen at a site dated within known history. Yet perhaps the most impressive of these marks, and most probably the ones made by the conceptual machine of origin, are the scars witnessed and now subsequently catalogued at Baalbek. These are far too large for any hand tool, 
made into solid granite with such precision. These also display circular motions, as if left by a modern-day tunnel boring machine. This evidence, undoubtedly unnoticed upon many more ancient sites, is clearly compelling evidence to support our channel's hypothesis that a mysterious history once occurred here on our planet, and will hopefully shed some light on the amazing people responsible for this phase of our past. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. While perusing the many perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue – evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people, placed far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework, also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework, seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision, they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of this ancient cave is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Longyu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation, originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world, presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste as if the machine tasked with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. We recently covered the astonishing ancient megaliths known as the Colossus of Memnon, a pair of 1,000-plus ton statues that have not only survived unknown eons into the modern day, but still possessed some of their most intriguing features all the way into known recorded history, most notably during the Roman Empire, when they were often regarded as having been able to sing at first light every day. We also touched upon the little-known conclusion, made by a number of individuals and even funded academics, 
referring to many other enigmatic artifacts that have been found across Giza, and even Egypt as a whole, as having been once lathe-worked. These often stone artifacts are so precise in their construction, with pottery even displaying a level of delicacy from their makers, that the only explanation for their existence could be attributed to having once been machine-worked, with the ancient Egyptians, claimed as their so-called makers, having once possessed enormous lathes, something modern man has only understood and utilized for a very brief time span, with a number of multi-ton sarcophagi also sharing this explanation for their creation. As to explain them as having once been made merely by hand is not only illogical, but almost an inconceivable tale to attach to such precisely made stonework. Created with not only astonishing symmetry, but also an astoundingly delicate and precise attention to detail, which modern man has only attained using modern lathes. Yet any explanation as to how these lathes were powered, how these individuals worked such enormous stones, or indeed what tools they utilized to cut such hard stones, remains largely unexplained. It is as if modern academia had been cornered by these past capabilities of this now lost civilization, having to admit that such precision can only be accomplished with seemingly advanced technology, yet, conveniently, leaving any practical explanation of what these technologies looked like, where they went, or how they were made or used, absent from their explanations of these incredible artifacts. Yet, interestingly, Ancient Egypt is not the only place which contains these remarkable relics. Babalovo, also known as Bavolovka Palace, is a historical building located near the city of St. Petersburg, Russia. This palace was built towards the end of the 18th century, during the reign of Catherine II of Russia. And one of the most astonishing relics found within this building is the so-called bathtub, which is claimed to have been made for the Tsar Alexander I. This explanation of origin is regardless of its incredible size, symmetry, and indeed precision, in which it was once cut with precision that just like the enigmatic artifacts that can be found within Egypt, should only have a logical explanation of creation, which included that of a lost technology, or more specifically, an enormous lathe and heavy-duty yet precision-cutting instruments. Yet curiously, this explanation is absent from mainstream academia's explanation as to the origins of this enormous multi-ton stone dish. Nero's bathtub is yet another smoking gun of this now lost technology, and indeed lost civilization. And although the vaults beneath where it lay within the Vatican measures an incredible 25 kilometers in length, packed full of hidden writings, artifacts, and historical controversies, this so-called bathtub is housed in full public view upon the floors of the Catholic palace above. These hidden vaults spared its presence, as if when first displayed, those in possession of it did not recognize the past accomplishment that this so-called bathtub once was. Not only the unusual shape of this other enormous dish for a bathtub, but the technology and techniques of stonework that would have once had to have been utilized to create it. They clearly believe that it was indeed created by Nero himself, and not a past relic of a now lost civilization, with all similar relics found within ancient Egypt exposed as ancient machine stones. The question is, who made these ancient relics? How did they make them? And if made by the claimed builders, why is this technology now lost? They are undoubtedly highly compelling.